It's 2017 and Old Time Radio DVD is still here. Check out our new customer ownership program and the lowest prices ever. Just go to oldtimeradiodvd.com for full information about this wonderful program. Don't forget our new program, 123 Ready TV. Folks, this is really a great app for Android and Windows phones, computers, and tablets. And it's only $19.99. In the near future, we will be adding a new computer component to it old time radio it's a great product for 2017 visit oldtimeradiodvd.com today place your order you'll be glad you did mystery theater presents breaking strain the first of three by arthur clark tonight from cbc halifax in radio version by charles parr the first of three science fiction stories by Arthur Clarke, Breaking Strain. This is what I call the dead part of the orbit. What do you mean? Well, when Earth's so far behind, you forget what it's like. And Venus so far ahead that you don't care what it's like. <laughs> People talk about the romance of the spaceways. <laughs> you know, they've got no idea of the months of nothingness and boredom. If not even days and nights to give some idea that the time's passing. I wouldn't say boredom. We've got plenty to do. Well, yes, routine jobs. Nothing really interesting. I fill up time well enough if they're done properly. I'm due to tape the log now. I'll get the recorder going. Ready for the call over, Mac? Okay, shoot. Freighter Star Queen calling Venus Monitor Beacon. Freighter Star Queen calling... Venus Monitor Beacon. Captain Grant, taping ship's log, March 14th, 2046. Recording at 1100 hours, 22 minutes, Earth Greenwich time. Orbit, Earth to Venus. 115 days out from Earth, planet fall at Venus due in 30 days. That is to say, April 13, 2046. Arrival time computed, 1440 Earth Greenwich time. Speed? 23,360 miles an hour. Atomic drive functioning normally. All maintenance routine. Checking carried out by Engineer McNeil. Air pressure inside hull? 14.4 pounds per square inch. Oxygen reserve... Hello, that's queer. I'll switch off the recorder. You can wind back to the previous question. What's up? There's no uh, no reading on the oxygen reserve. Here, let me try. She certainly doesn't flash. If we get all the liquid oxygen we want in the hold, must be the indicator wiring at fault. Yeah, I suppose that's it. Now, to check up. From the tank, Mac. Put a current through, see where the brake is. Okay. And would you mind doing it right away? Yes, if you want me to. Well, it's not all that urgent, but if the oxygen reserve indicator's still not working before I finish taping this log, then I ought to mention it. But if it's put right before you play the tape on transmission, then you needn't. I get it. Right. Okay, Grant. I'll go and check. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, what about the log delay? I'll go on direct transmission. Tell them it's coming. <coughs> Freighter Star Queen calling Venus Monitor Beacon on direct transmission. Star Queen to Venus Monitor. Owing to a small technical hitch, our daily log tape will be delayed 
about 15 minutes. End of message. Signing off. Hmm. Hope that keeps them quiet. I don't start a whole fuss about nothing. Got enough red tape in this trip as it is. Ah, Mac, have you got the... God! What on earth's the matter? Grant! Grant, it's true! What? It's true! It's, it's gone! What else? We're finished! Oh, my God, we're finished! Pull yourself oh, together, God. man! Oh, God. Pull yourself God. together! What's gone? The oxygen reserve. We're finished, I tell you. There's a tank of liquid oxygen just outside the door there. You haven't used half of it yet. How can it be gone? <sighs> What are you babbling about? Come, come and look for yourself. Come and look. Ah, what nonsense are you talking? Oh, What's the matter with you? It's not nonsense, I tell you. Ah, they should have warned me at base you were subject to hysteria. Look, look, there's. Why don't you the get a grip on yourself? Page at zero. You are. Yes. Yes. It's true. It's true, okay. It's impossible. But. It's true. Where are you going? The control room. That tablet set me up a bit. In a minute. I, I'm sorry I made a fool of myself. I'll, I'll, I'll be better in a moment. Well... Yesterday, we had all the oxygen reserve we needed. And now it's gone. How? How? It was a meteor. How could it be a meteor? Oh, they're working already. What's working? The pills. I feel calmer now. Oh, damn your pills and damn your panic. I said, how could it be a meteor? What about the alarms? I just tested the air pressure for the log tape. It's normal. How could we have been holed by a meteor? Well, we weren't. Well, then, how do you... Oxygen's refrigerated in coils outside the hull. The meteor must have caught us sideways and smashed them without touching the hull, and the oxygen just boiled away. A million to one chance, and it had to be us. Venus Communications Center, Signal Officer Brennan speaking. Hello, Brennan. Simic here. Yes, sir? I'm just lining up the daily report summary. There's nothing to be added from Signal Mr. Okey. No, sir. It's only the usual routine stuff. Right. Come in. Hello, Jack. Didn't know you were still on duty. What have you got for me? Your last job for the day? Yes. Thank heaven. Well, shall I start her up? Oh, okay. Let's get it over with. Reader, Sir Green calling Venus Monitor Beacon. Sir Green calling Venus Monitor. This is an emergency call. Holy smoke! Do you hear that? Turn the volume up. The refrigeration coils of our reserve oxygen supply have been smashed by a meteorite. The whole contents of the tank have escaped. We estimate we have enough oxygen circulating in the hull to keep the two of us alive for 20 days. We have 30 days to go to Venus. Our orbit, speed, and fuel supplies are known to you from our previous daily logs. This is Captain Grant asking for any advice or assistance you can give to us. Signing off. Right. Go to Simic. Get rescue operations on the blower. Okay. And wait there. I'll give the general alarm and I'll be on the intercom. Signals officer, monitor beacon. Emergency call from Star Queen. Top priority. Clear all channels. Stand by for details. Brennan. They've lost their oxygen reserve. Yes, sir. They'll be dead before they can get here. Get straight on it. Yes, sir. Acknowledge the signal. We will get back to them again in ten minutes. Okay. Right away, sir. Get the one. Mac? Mac? Yes? They've had our message. 
Well? And they're coming out again in ten minutes. In the meantime, I'm having a quick run through of the loading schedule in case there's anything in the cargo which might help us in some way. Though I don't think it's very likely. Any good? Well, so far it runs to two extremes. Absolute necessities, medical supplies, precision instruments, and so on. Uh-huh. Sheer luxuries, just things they can't get on Venus, like... Well, here, look. A uh, case of cigars, one kilo. Here, one crate of champagne. Well, pity if that lot gets wasted. Uh, must have cost a fortune to ship it out. Hmm. I never realized our cargo was so interesting. Books. Some of them not even technical. Uh, can I have the key of the hold? What for? Oh, just a routine check. Here you are. Thanks. See you in a minute. Reels of microfilm, 204. Computer parts, 17 kilos. Transistors, one the micro kilos. Oh. It's coming on. Venus monitor beacon calling Captain Grant, freighter Star Queen. Calling Captain Grant, freighter Star Queen. Your message received and understood. We are already communicating with technical experts both here on Venus and on Earth, and we will do everything in our power to assist you. A two-way conference is to be held within the next hour between transport committees on both planets. As soon as we have the results of their deliberations, we will get in touch with you again. Lieutenant Brennan, Venus Monitor Beacon, signing off and wishing you good luck. And we'll need it. All the luck we can get. What the devil? Hi, Grant. Me. Ah, this, this is a hard pull, but here she comes. Oh, ah. What do you think you're doing? Ah, this is what I call champagne. Ah, talk about quick action. <laughs> Only the second bottle and I feel like a new man already. Open that crate. <laughs> yeah. You stole champagne from the hole. Ah, oh, you got a remarkable grasp of the obvious. That's what you've got, old man. The key. That's why you wanted the key. Hey. Hey, what are you doing? Bottles. Hey, give me that. Hey, it's mine. There. There's your bottle. Now give me the key to the hold. What'd you do that for? Come on, hand it over. What? The key to the hold. Uh, here, I, I got it here on the ring. Give it to me. Yeah, but look now, Grant. Now bottle, listen to me, right? McNeil. This wasn't finished. I'd only just listen. Started... Okay. I've told you twice already. Our only chance is to keep calm and keep our wits about us. There's no sense in behaving like animals. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Not that I'm really surprised. You've never shown much strength of character. And why shouldn't I try to cheer myself up a bit? Our only chance. You know as well as I do, we haven't got a hope. Not a dog's chance. The best brains on two planets are trying to pull us through. There's a committee in session right ah, now. Committee, committee. What can any committee do, eh? Eh? Now, look, nobody can save us. Now, you've said so yourself. You know as well as I do that in 20 days' time, we'll both be dead. Yes, dead. A bit blue around the gills and exceedingly dead. Well, of course, there's uh, another little point no one has mentioned yet, though no doubt it's flickered through your head as it has through mine. What do you mean? Oh, you know, like those little sums we used to do at school. You know, the sort of thing. If six men take two days to assemble five helicopters... Well? Uh, only this one's much easier. If there's enough oxygen to last two men 20 days, then there's enough to last one man for 40. One man, Grant. One of us could get to Venus alive. You'd better go back to your bunk and sober up again. Okay, 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 I'll go. But, uh, I'll leave you with that pleasant little thought. I'll just imagine it. One of us swallow a dose of that poison in the medicine chest, that 
quick working, painless, tasteless stuff which the powers that be thoughtfully provided for just such an emergency as this. McNeil. And then the lucky survivor puts on a space suit, drags the body to the airlock, and pushes it out to an everlasting arm. Go back to your bunk. All right, Grant. All right. Don't lose your temper again. Not bad enough already. But to be cooped up with this faint hearted, boozing bundle of nerves. He doesn't deserve to live. By God, that's true. He doesn't deserve to live. Now or never. Now. Or never. Hello, McNeil. I'm getting some coffee ready. Want some? Well, if this latest crisis is over already, yes. Um. Uh, yes? You're out of sugar. Could you get some from the store cupboard? All right. I'll be back in a minute. It. Damn it, where is it? Ah, here. Approximately one half. Why don't they use clearer print and this of all things for God's sake? Yes. One half gram will cause painless and instantaneous death. Ah, it's almost a double dose. Now the coffee. Whew. Oh, God, the bottle. He hit the idiot. He'll be out on the table right under his nose. Well, here's the sugar. <sighs> Good. Uh, two for you, as usual. Please. Uh, here you are. Thanks. <sighs> Good Lord. That's the matter. Well, you've made it properly for once. It's really hot. Was that all? Did you... Did you taste it? Oh, only a sip. Hey, you seem edgy. It's unusual for you. Uh, do I? Uh, I must be this foul air. Uh, hey, aren't you drinking? Oh, in a moment, when it cools off a bit. Uh, Grant. Yes? There's something on my mind... What do you mean? What is it? Well, I'm thinking about this proposition that one of us might reach Venus alive if the other... Yes, uh, I, I know. Well, I, I was a bit tight when I spoke about it. Seems the only way out, though. I suppose one of us would have to walk out of the airlock, or better still, take some of that instantaneous poison in the medicine chest. Yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, it's cooled off now. Well, we'd have to decide by picking a card or something. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, well, we we must talk it over. Yes, yes, we must. Well, here goes. Bottoms up. moment, please. There are a couple of points to which I ought to draw your attention. You all heard Captain Grant's message about the dreadful decision which had to be taken aboard the Star Queen. Although he was correct in saying there was enough oxygen left for one man, the air did, in fact, become very foul indeed in the last few days. Is the survivor here yet? I'm coming to that. The freighter came into orbit around Venus at 7.20 this morning. The survivor was in very poor physical condition, and he was taken off the Star Queen and brought down by rocket tug. Excuse me a moment. Yes? For five minutes? He can come in right away. He's coming in now. 
He's been in the hospital ward. They make the condition he mustn't be questioned for more than five minutes. I can't help it. It's doctor's orders, not mine. So please, let him off lightly at this first interview. Here he is. Here he comes. Good for you. Well done. I can't tell you how glad we all are to see you safe and sound, McNeil. Thanks. Here, here. Here, here. Thank you, all, all of you. I've explained to these gentlemen of the press that you'll do your best to answer their questions for five minutes only during this first interview. Okay, Brennan. Five minutes is short enough. Let's get on with it. Uh, Mr. McNeil, first of all, the question which everybody on two planets is asking, how did Captain Grant take it? He, uh, he took it calmly. Very, very calmly indeed. Captain Grant was a brave man. It was a great pity he had to go. How was the body uh, disposed of? The airlock. Would you mind speaking up? I... I had to push it through the airlock. What was the worst difficulty you had to contend with when you were on your own? Oh, working the controls. Well, why was it difficult to work the controls? I mean, not, not physically difficult, but working out slowly all the things I, I normally have at my fingertips when, when I'm in, when the, when the air... Hold it, hold it. Here, here, sit down. Gentlemen, I think you'll agree that Mr. McNeil is in no condition to face further questioning. I suggest we leave him here for at least an hour to rest and recover. Will you be all right here? Yes. Anything you'd like me to get for you? No. No, thank you. A good strong coffee, perhaps? Coffee? No. I don't think I'll want coffee again for a long time. After that last one with Grant... Our queen. Well, Grant, what are you staring at? You look as if you're seeing a ghost. But, but you just drank it. You drank it all. Well, of course I drank it. And I wish I could get rid of the flavor of it. I thought better of you, Grant. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? This little attempt of yours to poison me, of course. As a matter of interest, when did you decide to kill me? Just now. You know, by rights, I ought to work myself up into a temper now and call the monitor beacon and denounce you to the authorities. But uh, I've never been much good at losing my temper. Well, what do you intend to do now? Well, before we were interrupted by the... Uh, <clears throat> Caught the episode, we were discussing ways and means of one of us saying goodbye so that the other might get to Venus alive. You don't mean carry on just as if nothing had happened? That's exactly what I do mean. It doesn't make sense. You've got something up your sleeve. Look, you're in no position to accuse me of plotting anything. Now, I suggest we decide which one of us shall take poison. And at this time, it'll be the real thing. <laughs> so he changed it. You put something else in the bottle. Of course. I saw it coming even before you did. I thought about 15 ways in which you could have killed me on this ship. It quite helped to pass the time to work them out. Poison was so obvious, it was the first thing I fixed. Well, there's not much left to say now, is it? And you're willing to start all over again. You'll take the poison yourself if you lose. Yes, and don't think I'm just being noble and turning the other cheek. I suppose in acting like this, I, I don't fit neatly into your preconceived picture of me. Well, let's say I've got my own ideals and I like to stick to them. As far as possible, I try to act like a civilized, rational being. Does that include what? That doesn't matter. Oh, no, I know what you're thinking. The champagne. Well, that's one thing I don't regret. A civilized man should always know when to get drunk. 
but perhaps you wouldn't understand. There's a new pack of cards in the drawer somewhere, isn't there? Yes. Here we are. Shall we say the lowest card is the one? If you like. Here, I'll shuffle. I've never exactly taken to you, Grant. But I've often admired you, and that's why I'm sorry it's come to this. I admired you most of all the day of the accident. I didn't behave very well, but uh, the shock of it knocked me over. Knocked us both over in different ways, I guess. It was a surprise of my life to see you cracking up. Here, cut. Did it ever occur to you, by the way, that if only one of us survives without a covering message from the other, he'll have an uncomfortable time explaining what happened when he gets to Venus? I suppose it's true. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. Well, let's get it over, then. Here, cut again. Lois Carr takes the rap. Loser speaks to Venus, and then it's finished. All right. Shall I? Yes. Go on. Bye. Now mine. Well, well, show it, man. Turn it. Turn it. You've won. You'll get to Venus. A three... feel better after that few minutes rest? Uh, yes, uh, a bit. You know, I've got a real job keeping those press boys in order. They're still milling around downstairs. I'm not letting them in here again, but they've asked me to put one more question to you. May I? If you like. Well, then, what's your feeling or emotion at this moment after such a terrible experience? What sensation is uppermost in your mind? Just being alive. Breaking Strain, adapted for radio by Charles Parr, was the first of three science fiction stories by Arthur Clarke, presented on Mystery Theater. Bruce Armstrong played McNeil. John Fulton was heard as the captain. Other performers were Claude Bede, Edwin Rubin, and Donald Myers. Sound, Harold Porter and Lee Bailey. Audio, Bud Tabor. Next Friday, the second of three by Arthur Clarke, The Songs of Distant Earth. This is Pat Napier speaking. Mystery Theater was produced from Halifax by Peter Duncan. <laughs>